It's almost strange, isn't it? You work hard, you stay disciplined, you watch the number on the scale drop, and for a moment you feel like you finally won the battle against belly fat. But then, almost quietly, almost disrespectfully, the fat begins to return. And the worst part is that most people blame themselves. They think they lost control, lost motivation, lost willpower. But here's the truth, the diet industry never tells you, this rebound has nothing to do with weakness and everything to do with biology. Your body operates Your like body a highly advanced survival long system, one designed diets. long before modern diets existed. And when that system senses rapid fat loss, especially around your midsection, it doesn't celebrate, it panics. To your body, losing belly fat feels less like success and more like a threat. And that single misunderstanding between you and your biology is where the entire story begins. A story that finally explains why fat comes back and what you can do to stop it. Right after the diet ends, long before anyone notices anything changing on the outside, your body quietly enters what scientists call the adaptive phase. It doesn't announce itself. There's no warning light, no alarm, no obvious shift. But inside, a recalibration begins. Your metabolism slows just enough to matter. Hunger hormones start to whisper instead of shout. And every calorie you eat is suddenly being evaluated with far more caution than before. Mary, who had just dropped 8 pounds, thought she was finally in the clear. She went back to her usual meals, nothing extreme, nothing reckless, but her body wasn't operating by the old rules anymore. It had switched into a mode designed to protect her, not to please her. Food that once felt harmless now carried a different meaning. A small snack seemed to linger longer. Energy dipped sooner. The adaptive phase is invisible, but it is powerful. And while you're celebrating progress, your biology is already asking a different question. Is this a temporary change, or is survival now at stake? As the adaptive phase deepens, something even more primal begins to unfold. Your body shifts from gentle caution into what researchers describe as energy defense mode, a biological stance designed not for comfort, but for survival. When Mary lost those eight pounds, she didn't realize her body was reading that loss the same way it would read a famine. To your biology, rapid changes around the midsection aren't progress, they're danger signals. And so the defense response activates automatically. Cravings spike out of nowhere, fatigue settles in faster, digestion slows just enough to make every meal feel heavier. None of this is psychological, none of it is about willpower. These sensations are tactical responses your body nudging you toward eating more, especially energy-dense foods. And the strangest part is that you don't choose these urges, your brain chooses them for you. In defense mode, the priority is simple. Preserve energy, restore fat, protect life. And this silent conflict between your goals and your biology is where the rebound truly begins, even before a single pound returns. As the defense response continues, another mechanism begins tightening beneath the surface, one even more influential in long-term fat regain. Scientists call it metabolic adaptation, and it's the reason two people eating the same meal can burn completely different amounts of energy. After her weight loss, Mary noticed something strange. She was eating the same portions as before, yet her energy felt lower and her progress froze. That wasn't in her imagination. When you lose belly fat, your metabolism doesn't just slow it learns, it becomes more efficient, burning fewer calories at rest than someone your same size who never dieted. This shift isn't temporary, it can last months, even years. And because your body now predicts future shortages, it stores calories more aggressively, especially around the abdomen where fat is easiest to access. It's a silent recalibration that turns everyday meals into strategic fuel reserves. So while you think you've returned to normal, your body is operating on a completely different rulebook, one designed to rebuild what it believes was lost for survival. And this adaptive engine is what makes fat regain feel so unfair, yet so inevitable, unless you understand how to interrupt the cycle. Behind all these changes sits one of the most misunderstood forces in weight loss, the weight set point. Think of it like the thermostat in your home, your brain has a range it believes is safe, familiar, and sustainable. When Mary's weight dipped below her long-held set point, her brain didn't cheer. It reacted. To your brain, dropping too far below that preset range is a threat, 
and it responds by increasing hunger, slowing energy burn, and pushing you back toward what it considers normal. This isn't emotional. It isn't personal. It is survival coding built into the deepest parts of the nervous system. And the most frustrating part is that set points don't update quickly. You can lose weight faster than your brain can accept it. That's why maintaining weight often feels harder than losing it. Belly fat, especially, sits at the heart of this protection system because abdominal fat is the body's quickest access energy reserve. But here's the hopeful twist. Set points can be changed slowly, deliberately, through consistent habits that teach your brain a new definition of safe. Most people never realize that losing fat doesn't eliminate fat cells, it only shrinks them. And those shrunken cells behave in a surprisingly strategic way. Fat cells have a kind of memory, almost like tiny storage units waiting to be refilled. When Mary dropped weight, her fat cells didn't disappear. They simply emptied, and once empty, they began signaling her brain with a quiet urgency. Fill me back up. These signals increase hunger, slow metabolism, and subtly shift how your body interprets every calorie you eat. And here's where belly fat becomes the prime target. Abdominal fat cells are especially sensitive to hormones like insulin and cortisol, making them faster and more willing to refill than fat in other areas. In periods of stress, lack of sleep, or inconsistent eating, they react instantly, almost like sponges absorbing calories at the first opportunity. This is why regain often shows up in the same places you worked hardest to change. Not because the body is sabotaging you, but because those cells are simply doing what they were built to do. Preserve energy for survival. Even after the adaptive phase, the defense mode, and the hormonal shifts begin to fade, a quieter force continues working in the background, something researchers call metabolic drift. It's subtle, gradual, and almost impossible to notice day by day. But over weeks or months, it compounds. Mary felt it when her usual meals suddenly seemed was heavier, long even though nothing had diets. changed. Your body starts burning fewer calories than expected, creating a slow, silent tilt toward fat regain. And because the abdomen is the quickest energy storage zone, that drift shows up there first. It's not dramatic. It doesn't scream for attention. It simply nudges your body back toward its old patterns, inch by inch, until the mirror reflects a change you never saw coming. And there's one more force that quietly accelerates all of this. Ultra-processed foods. After weight loss, when your appetite hormones are already heightened and your metabolism is operating in conservation mode, these foods hit harder than ever. Their engineered flavors trigger sharp dopamine spikes, making cravings feel almost magnetic. Just one bite can reignite urges you thought you left behind. They also cause fast rises and crashes in blood sugar, pushing your body toward insulin-driven fat storage, especially in the abdominal area, where fat cells respond the fastest. And because weight loss temporarily reduces microbial diversity in your gut, ultra-processed foods can disrupt digestion and hunger signaling even further. What feels like a harmless snack becomes the spark that accelerates regain. It's not about willpower, it's about biology reacting to the wrong kind of fuel. So how do you break this cycle, this adaptive phase, this defense mode, this metabolic drift that seems to pull you back no matter how hard you work? The answer isn't punishment or restriction, it's strategy. And it begins with reverse dieting. A slow, intentional increase in calories that teaches your metabolism that food is safe again. Instead of shocking your system, you retrain it step by step so it stops clinging to every calorie like a survival resource. From there, your greatest ally becomes protein. Higher protein intake doesn't just support satiety, it protects the muscle you need to keep metabolism high. Mary began aiming for around 30% of her daily calories from protein, and the shift was immediate. Her energy stabilized. Her cravings softened and strength training amplified everything. Muscle is metabolic gold. It raises your resting burn, improves insulin sensitivity, and tells your body to prioritize lean mass over fat storage. Just three sessions a week can tilt the balance away from regain and toward long-term stability. And finally, hormonal stability becomes the foundation that holds everything together. 
consistent meal timing, lowering stress, prioritizing sleep, and limiting ultra-processed foods calm the very hormones that once pushed you toward regain. When your hormones are steady, your appetite, your cravings, and even your metabolism begin falling back into alignment. None of these strategies are extreme. They are quiet, deliberate signals to your biology that the famine is over and it no longer needs to fight you. As these strategies take hold, something remarkable begins to happen beneath the surface. Your brain, the same system that once fought to restore lost belly fat, starts to relax. Through steady routines, consistent nutrition, stable sleep, and regular strength training, your biology slowly updates its definition of safe. This is how a weight set point resets, not through force, but through repeated signals that convince your body the new you isn't a threat. Mary noticed it around week 10. Her hunger normalized. Her energy returned. Meals no longer felt like they had the power to undo her progress. And the most powerful part is that once the set point shifts, maintaining weight doesn't feel like a daily battle anymore. Your body stops pulling you backward and finally starts working with you instead of against you. Here's the truth at the heart of everything you've just learned. Belly fat doesn't return because you failed, it returns because your body thought it needed to protect you. Every craving, every energy dip, every frustrating rebound was biology acting out of fear, not rebellion. But once you understand the signals, the patterns, and the survival coding behind them, you're no longer fighting blind. You're working with your body, not against it. And that's where lasting change finally begins. The real victory isn't losing weight fast, it's teaching your metabolism, your hormones, and your set point that the new version of you is safe to maintain. When your body feels safe, it stops defending the past and starts supporting your future. So tell me in the comments. Which insight changed the way you see your own weight loss journey? And if this helped you understand your biology better, make sure to like, subscribe, and share this message with someone who needs it.